Previously on Starting Over, Dr. Katz encouraged Kim to open up to her roommates. They look at you and think you have everything. You don't show them the human side of you. Well, I thought I did. But she struggled to make connections, especially with Josie. Kim, you don't even care to find out what happened. You just want everybody to believe you. Tawanda was under pressure to recommit to the house ever since her warning at the Board of Review. You got to take some risks. Not gonna support you in your emotional suicide. And she started to reflect on her life when Iyanla had her write an autobiography. Somewhere in there, Tawanda, you learned that it wasn't okay for you to be who you are. I, I don't know where that is. But we gonna hunt it down and find it. But she was overwhelmed when her personal life started to unravel. If you keep up this kind of stuff, and when you come back here, you're gonna have some papers in the room because I'm you're getting on my nerves. I'm trying to tell you that. Is it you? Yeah. Uh-oh. I am very anxious. My husband is coming. I'm excited. Just a little nervous, not too much. Just a little, little nervous. There is not a day goes by with me being here and starting over house that I don't think about my husband. I think about him every single day. exercise this morning is called feeling naughty. <laughs> <laughs> However, naughty is spelled K-N-O-T-T-Y. <laughs> hey. This exercise actually has special meaning for me and Haley, who's not able to be here today. She's a little tied up. And Haley and I went an entire day handcuffed together and tied up together. Can you stop talking, please? This is where you need to go. Okay, I need to stop doing everything for everybody. Okay, you and... do it. No, I've already done it. When? So, I have been asked by Dr. Stan to assist him this morning in tying you ladies up. Yeah. And um, in pairs. And you will be tied up for two and a half hours until you go to group. You will go about your chores as you normally would. Josie, you are so not smiling. <laughs> I will be assisting with you with Chloe. I'll be here for those two and a half hours in case you need some help. But, um, yeah, I will just tie you guys up now. And the groups will be, let's see, it's going to be Josie and Kim. Sine is going to be with Jennifer. And Summer and Tawanda. All right? We're going to tie your waists up like this. I don't know if I'm really going to enjoy being tied together with Sine, because she's really been getting on my nerves lately. You guys really need to focus mm -hmm. on the meaning behind this, because it will be the topic of your discussion at group. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> this is OK. I think that they've made the pairs the way that they think we're the least compatible with in the house. I'll kill you. <laughs> I think Summer's going to be tied up with T because Tawanda's father had an affair with another woman and Summer had an affair with a married man. So technically, Summer is the other woman. As Sine and I are making pancakes, I'm realizing that I have no patience for her at all. She's making spoon-sized pancakes and it's irritating me. It's taking forever. I know why we're together, Sine, because I have no effing patience. So you understand why you guys are paired the way you are? I don't. Yeah. I mean, we're a lot alike. Josie and Kim are being paired together. And the first thing that goes through my mind is, oh my goodness, this is going to be very dramatic. Wow. Middle, what out, middle, There out. we go.
My brother and sister have their own bedrooms and mm -hmm. his new wife, so it's not really like I'm involved. We have to be tied up for two and a half hours. I think Josie and I are both thinking, oh my goodness, you know, we know exactly why they're doing it. Possibly because um, they want us to maybe get into an argument. Honestly, it's not like it really bothers me because it bothered me so long when I was young that he wasn't there that now at least he's doing it right for two of his kids. Except, you know, okay, I guess I was the trial and error kid, but at least he knows what the hell he's doing now, even though he's not completely. And set. I feel that same way because when my dad left, I was six years old. Yeah. And your dad left. And he was having affairs. Oh, wow. And my mom had cervical cancer. And so she thought she was going to die. Okay. So she was hysterical most of the time. And she didn't finish college, and she didn't have a job. And Until then, she met. And then she met Erwin, and she they married at a courthouse. And, you know, it happened really you, fast. How old were you? I was then? like 14 or 15, just high, so high school. So from 8 to 14. And I had to leave. Without a dad, right? Right. Okay. Without a dad, taking care of my brother and my sister. Okay. And I had to leave everything that I loved all my friends and everybody to move down to this prestigious kind of place and try to fit into this high school. And I hated it. So, yeah, I just wanted to check in, see how you're doing. Yeah. I, you know, I tried, you know, obviously we played phone tags. I did, you know, oh, I know, really and know. I feel bad because I have a guy friend back home named Andy, and he doesn't call very often. But then they're like, I go, was that the girl or the guy? And they go, the guy. And I was like, oh, crap. I was like, will you spell Andy with an I if it's a girl? <laughs> so anyway, so it was a big mess. I wasn't even sure who I was calling back anymore. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Be good. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Are you uncomfortable? Actually, no, I'm fine. So then I married my husband, and we had two kids, Chelsea and Snowden, and... Which is the cowboy, right? Yeah. And um, he's eight years older than I am. So I think I looked at him for, you know, somebody that could give me that stability and that support. Father figure Because I didn't want to go like home. Like a man figure? Yeah, and he was... He was basically one of those guys that wasn't intimate, you know, unavailable. You know, I chose, obviously, the wrong man. And the biggest, you know, regret I have is, you know, I never wanted to get divorced. My parents had a nasty, vicious, wicked divorce. My mom talked bad about my dad. My dad talked bad about I, my mom. I know that they feeling. They forced that whole even though they were, thing on me. Even though my parents weren't married, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. I am finding that Josie and I are exactly alike. She just doesn't know it yet. So then I was a single mother for years. So you're just oh. like your mom? Yeah, and just like you. A single mother, just like you. Being delicate with him is understanding that once he sees the real Tawanda, he may not be open to be with that real Tawanda because that's not who he married. Think about how different we are. You had lots of siblings. I didn't have any. You're tall and thin, and I'm not yet. And I'm not listening to you. Well, I'm just saying. And and um, you dress like a girl, and I haven't learned how to do that yet. And I dress like a girl. Mm -hmm. If you asked me this a week ago, if I was comfortable with discussing things with Summer, I would have probably said, mm -mm. however, now I am. I just understand Summer as a person. And she doesn't, she just doesn't mean any harm when she does certain things or says certain things. That's just Summer. I'm different from a lot of people in the house. Yeah. I don't think that it's just that. I don't think it is just that. You know, I think it starts with what started with us. They are the funniest. They are the funniest. Yeah. That is so funny. Shut up, Tawanda! It is funny. You shut up. You're funny looking. You're funny looking, your baby daddy. <laughs> You're making this really difficult. No, you are. You started with the shoe thing. That's because you stepping on my feet. Me changing my shirt doesn't hurt you. Knock it off. You're ruining my ankle. You're ruining mine. Okay, here we go. I can untie you now. Yay! This Woo! first. <laughs> oh, this bottom one. Can you get that one, or can you just slide that one off? The bottom ones you can might slide off on too. There we go. Good morning, Hi, Hi Linnell. Hi, Hi Linnell. Thank, 
thank you very Thanks. much. You're very welcome. I, can call I leave you with this fine group. And well, thank hopefully you. Hopefully they've learned a lot from their exercise. Thanks for letting me be Thank you, Linnell. Have a great thank day. You. We'll see you again Bye. soon. Bye, Bye Linnell. So how was this exercise? Interesting. It challenging. Was fun. fun, challenging, interesting. What I respect Kim now. And then we had a private conversation. I'm leaving between us because that's something I think that'll keep us close. But um, I totally take back a lot of the things I said about Kim. And I am sorry. And she doesn't care if I apologize, but I think it should be accepted because she is a wonderful person and she got there through hard work and devotion. Jen? I learned that I need to get some more patience. <laughs> Where do you get that stuff at? I don't know, but as soon as I find it, I will let everyone know. Because <laughs> I need some more. What are you quick to do? Blow up. Mm. Well, you know, you're recognizing it more and more, right? Oh, and I, I always think that I'm not doing it wrong. Like, Sine was walking wrong. It wasn't me that was walking wrong. Well, you're kind of invested in being right. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Duh, okay. That means we hit it, right? Yes. Okay. Does anybody have a problem with the idea that a healthy relationship has a good dose of, I value what you say and you value what I say, and it's not one-sided? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that takes what? It takes some... It takes a lot of shade of gray for me to do what I did today. Okay. Good. So you learned this in in invaluable lesson, Josie, that if you take the time to get to know someone and their roots and who they are, you may develop a respect for them. You may not like them. You may not share certain things um, in common with them, but you're going to develop a respect that's going to lead you to a different level of your relationship. Yep. With men, that's going to happen also. It's going to happen because you prejudge men, you think about them, yeah. you quickly dismiss them. Yeah. You don't get to know why they are the way they are. When you guys talk to me, it's often men are. <laughs> what does a real man count? A real man to me is somebody that um, is not, you know, too much of a wuss, that can show emotion, but, you know, not so Over the needy edge. that, yeah, not yeah. to the point where, like, they're sitting in a corner crying. Cherry clean I mean, they the need time. to be a man. Okay, can they cry at all? Yeah, yeah they, they cry. They cry. Absolutely. Yeah. They can Does cry. anybody get turned off by a man crying? No. no. It's, it's, it's not that it's not all yeah. the time. All the time. <laughs> Over nothing. Well, no, it's not all the time. We're talking about once no. in a while. Oh, yeah, once in a while. What about, okay, what about your boyfriend or your man? You're seeing a, a sad movie and your boyfriend no. or your man. He oh, cries. No. No, 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 no. What? That's no, no. If he cries more than me, then that's a problem. He can't cry that, at that's the end a, of the movie. Uh, that, that would be a big problem. Josie, you, you're not sure about that, right? He can cry at a movie. I thought we were talking about why we were tied together. I'm not focusing on the whole let's, let's diss men, let's just, so uh, I'm not okay. in this conversation. Well, you know what we're talking about? We're talking about unhealthy relationships, and mm -hmm. here's what's coming out of this, is that you all, all have your viewpoints about what makes a relationship unhealthy, some of which are not going to coincide with other people. Mm -hmm. But you are going to agree that what makes an unhealthy relationship is when there's a lack of respect, a lack of cooperation, and a lack of communication and a lack of compromise. What makes a healthy relationship in this house, it's starting over, is the ability to understand that you are all different and that you came here from very different experiences. Josie have both been codependent in relationships. They've both been tied to the other person, so to speak, because they don't feel good about themselves. Well, today, I want them to discover new types of love, so they're going on a love hunt. We're gonna talk about love, ladies. Have you ever loved yourselves for, like, a millisecond? Have you ever looked in the mirror and thought, oh, wow, I get to be me today? Have you ever thought, wow, Look at me, oh my gosh. You ever said that? Not that I remember. No? A long time ago. So I wanna give you an exercise today and I want you to do it together. Because as both of you are learning, and I know Josie, we talked about this morning, your support is critical. Support is critical, especially when you're going through a dark tunnel. And both of you 
are in the dark about love. These of the Starting Over House were tied together this morning to show them what it's like to be codependent, to get all their needs met by one person, to rely on that person for everything. Josie and Summer have both done that. They've both relied on someone else to make them happy. I want them to have new models of love. So today, ladies, you're going on a love hunt. You're going to look for love. So this is what you get to do. You're going to go to Westwood Village, and you are going to basically walk around, stand on a corner, interview people to find out how they love. I so don't want to ask people about their love life. I think that's very intrusive on my part. And I feel like it's um, something that you just keep really personal because it's something that you value. You excited? Don't look like it. No. What's up for you right now? There's just a lot of things people don't want to share. I mean, you don't want to share. What if it supported you in giving and receiving more love in your life? Would it be worth it? Yeah. Okay, what if this exercise showed you not to be so hard on yourself and actually love yourself more? Would it be worth it? Yeah. Okay, then it's worth it. Go for it. Have a great day, ladies. I will see you at 8.15. Oh, God. Any other questions? Hello? Hey, Mama. Hey, you? I have to write an autobiography. About you? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. So I ask your support by responding to these questions as honestly as possible. Ask your support, honest. You never know me. Not I to know. Be. Listen. Okay. Was your pregnancy with me planned? Planned? Was it? Through my time, you know nothing was planned. Okay. <laughs> what kind of baby was I? Did I cry a lot? What? Yep. yep. I already know that. You put the C in crying. <laughs> I'm talking to mommy on the phone and I'm asking her the questions about my conception and how I was when I was a child and as always mommy's being very honest and blunt mommy daddy said I was mean when I was a child was I mean I don't want to say you were mean I, I want to say well yeah I was mean boy you were gonna sugarcoat up and then change your mind when did I stop being mean? When did you stop? Wait a minute. <laughs> Girl, please. Mommy being blunt and straightforward with me reminds me a lot of how I'm feeling about Iyanla. Josie and I are going on a true love hunt. We are going to approach people on the street and ask them to tell us their love stories. Any kind of love we can find. I'm just not happy about this. I feel so intrusive. Josie is really not excited. What's in the bag? All my cool little love suckers I give to everybody when I ask them how they are in love. Hi. I'm completely aware that the reason she's not excited is because she is scared. I don't want to do this. I don't know how unobvious Get out on me. I don't have to be the one you take it out on, though. I'm not taking out on you. Well, you're yelling at me. So how we doing? Good. We're Very gonna good. look at your autobiography. Okay. I gave this autobiography assignment to Tawanda because her first step is to get to know herself. September 18, 1973. Michael Braxton Sr. and Evelyn Braxton gave birth to their new baby girl. She was the largest baby that was born to her mother. It was also a very hard pregnancy. Tawanda Chloe Braxton, named by my brother, Michael Braxton Jr., because he wanted a dog instead of a new baby sister. <laughs> Isn't that something? I am the fourth child born. I have two older sisters and a brother. A baby girl was not on their agenda. My parents were hoping for a baby boy. My mother felt that it was a blessing due to her doctor informing her that she was only to have one or two children at the most. And if she had any more, she would die. So um, she just looked at all of her children as being a blessing. Mm -hmm. And then she told me that I always wanted attention. And all the attention that I was given was never enough. And when I didn't get the attention that I wanted, I got angry. Some children need more attention than others. Right. You were four. So, I mean, there was a, 
There was a group. And right after I was born, a few weeks later, she was pregnant with Trina. Okay, so there you so, were. So, right, and I felt that I never had a chance to be the baby. I also hear some very profound messages in here. Mm -hmm. The most profound to me being they wanted a boy. Mm -hmm. In birth order, science, right. that's called that you're the wrong sex. Mm -hmm. So you come forward with a message of wrongness, mm -hmm. which very often leads to an overcompensation to be right. The other thing is, I never had my moment. Tony had her moment as a child. Michael had his moment. Tracy, Tracy had her moment. Then here you come. Mm -hmm. So in trying then to blend in, let's take it to the group. Mm -hmm. Let's take it to the singing. Mm -hmm. Here you are in the group, having your moment in mm -hmm. the group, and what happens? It was taken away. Tony gets mm -hmm. out. And then? Tamar. So the moment you found and were able to have, what happened to It was you? taken away. Well, it was disrupted. Right. Hello? Joan? Yes. Hey, it's Kim. Hi, Kim. So how are you? That's what I'm calling. Well, Kim, they're treating it like cancer. No, and they're they not. are taking out um, half the colon and the appendix and um, the small intestine and all the lymph nodes associated with it. Joan, no. Yeah. I have a lot of fears of losing people that are close to me, my mother and my children, and I'm getting a call that one of my closest friends now has cancer. So that is not good news, but no. they think that I'll probably you know, have a better survival chance that way. Now it's happening. My worst fear has come true. It scares me to death. Kim, it's I'm okay. I'm sorry, Joan. I know. I'm sorry. I know. It wasn't supposed to be me. I told Tom, you're the one who has colon cancer in your family. I pray for you every day. How are you guys? You guys want to do a love survey? Are you sure? You guys get a free sucker. Okay. so many rejections. People are telling us no, walking away from us, telling us they don't have time, telling us that they don't want to tell us anything. Are you sure? All right, thanks. <laughs> One thing I just want us to consider okay. as we write this chapter number one, A Star is Born, is that when you shift, your whole ecological system shifts. Mm -hmm. Andre married the angry to wander, mm -hmm. the afraid to wander, mm -hmm. the he married who you're not. Mm -hmm. Be delicate with him in becoming who you are. He didn't marry the real to wander. And you're saying once he sees the real to wander, he may not be open to be with that real to wander because that's not who he married. Yeah. Don't allow him to be the reason you stay small. Right. Because if he's supposed to be with you, he will. Right. But he has to be with you, right. who you are, right. and not who you're not. Mm -hmm. Tawanda has made some significant changes while she's been in the starting over house. I sure hope her husband can handle it. It's, uh, love shouldn't hurt this bad. It really shouldn't. I didn't think that love was gonna hurt me this My friend does have cancer. Really? Yeah. She's my, I mean, my closest best friend. Where is it? Colon. <gasps> and um, and she was going to the doctor Monday, and I didn't hear from her. I had this gut feeling. Mm -hmm. I called her. 
They're treating it like it's full-blown <gasps> cancer. It scares me to death. I am really feeling upset and sort of angry with God that this would happen to her. love stories. I'm not wanting to go up to people and ask them to tell us their love life. Um, I'm just thinking a lot of people really aren't willing to do something like that. Ma'am, do, do you have a love story you can tell me? Yes. 22 years ago? 22. He was swimming at the public pool when I was a lifeguard. A lifeguard. So did you like drown or something or was there like some like life? No, he tried. I really couldn't swim very well. <laughs> you fake drowned again. <laughs> I bit her. You bit her? You didn't bite me. Oh, he scratched you. He, he scratched me at a, a party. Oh. Wow. How long have you guys been together since then? Three years. Three years. Three wow. years? No way. So over scratch, you guys have been together for three years. That is awesome. Yeah. I'm meeting with Dr. Stan. First, we're talking about my husband and his visit. How are you? Good. I understand from Iyanla that your husband's coming this weekend. Yes. Yes. So how's that feel? Great. We all know it was difficult for you to trust men mm -hmm. because of what happened with your father. Right. How did you develop trust with Andre? I trusted him as much as I could trust a man. Just because of gender, you believe that all men are... Mm -hmm. What? Eventually going to cheat. So they're all driven by their sexual need to... I think so. It, this way of thinking, what this does for you is you can't be wrong. Because if this ever happens, you'll say, I knew it, I just was waiting for it, it happened. Mm. And for somebody who lived through an experience where your father betrayed you and your family, it is a huge wall. Yes. With big concrete it is. blocks. What do you give up by moving towards this more balanced approach that mm -hmm. says some men cheat some of the time? What do you give up by believing that? That's, that's just not something that I believe, no, no, though. No, no. Guys, you, that's just not stay something with that me. I can't. Okay, stay with I, me. okay, go ahead. If, go ahead. You, if you buy that, some men cheat some of the time, then what do you give up? Being right. Being right. Mm -hmm. Being in control. Mm -hmm. What do you gain from believing some men cheat some of the time? You let down your defenses. Mm -hmm. And when you let you down your defenses, maybe it will allow you to even love him more, to trust him more. You probably have never loved that way. The highest plane of love, which is what we're all trying to achieve, right? On some level. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. It's just a feeling. I mean, love is something you feel. It's something you, you, somebody you're with. You know, I mean, love is the most powerful, most strongest, most, you know, encompassing feeling on this earth. But, you know, if there's somebody meant for you, you'll find them and... And you never know where it'll be. Oh, that is definitely wow. reassuring. Thank you. I think it really hits me in the heart. I have some of the same stories that people are telling me. It might not work out with my baby's mother, so, you know, I just want to be at least there for my child. I don't want her. Well, yeah, I mean, at least you're open for that type of love oh, for your daughter, yeah, you know? That's, that's totally, that's, that's awesome. That's mandatory. It really makes me feel like I have a lot more love in my life than I was ever really willing to accept. We're getting a lot of love here right now. I know. <laughs> I knew he'd think I'm crazy. Well, but I was talking about how I felt that, um, you know, every man eventually cheats. You think that? I do believe Even that. your husband? I believe that. Every man eventually cheats. Always? Always. You and think I your try. husband's gonna cheat on you? Eventually. T? That's just my thoughts, my feelings, my experiences. Do you really? I do believe that. Yep. Why? Would you? Hell no. Well, see. Nope. But I can only control my thoughts, my feelings, and my choices. Right. I care too much about my vows. I care too right. much about, you know, mm -mm, the religious aspect of it. Have you talked to him it. about it? Oh, Andre? Yeah. yeah. He knows how I feel. And what does he say? None. He's a man. He will eventually cheat. And I'm just happy for being in a relationship now. My theory is expect the worst and be happy for the best. He says he won't, right? Mm -hmm. 
But, I mean, nothing's guaranteed. Cried. Oh, I know. That's true. Gosh, I hope not. That'd be a scary way to live, you know? We haven't talked in a while. So what's been going on since the girls left? Well, it seemed like when my children walked in the house, the house flipped. Like, it's almost like I can't even enjoy myself. For fear of? I don't know. I, I just knew I felt it. But it's interesting that it's almost like this attitude, things can't be too good. Is, is that some of the feeling? Like, Maybe, yeah. I, I mean, there's I don't deserve yeah. to be happy. Yeah. I think so. If I'm happy, I'll have to pay back with something, yep. some tragedy in yep. my life. Where yep. does that come from? Well, when my parents got divorced, I was in a certain religion. I was going to school, and my father was having his affairs, and my mother had cancer. Long story short, they ended up getting divorced, and we were then not... Were you excommunicated from the church? Ex exactly. I think that, you know, I almost feel like I'm... With all the bad things I've done, that I'm being punished by God. I mean, it sounds crazy. I oh, know that. Oh, I don't that, think it sounds but, crazy oh, at all. Good. <laughs> in when fact, I say, say in it fact, out loud. it sounds so real because think about it, you were six, seven years old. Yeah, yeah. You were going to Catholic school. Right. And you were learning what the Catholic Church taught. Right. They wouldn't give your parents a divorce. Because that was in the 60s. That's correct. Yeah. And so if you divorced, you were no longer a Catholic. Exactly. And now to this day, you have this part of you which still feels as if God is angry. So exactly. we have this war of the gods then, don't we? <laughs> right. So which God's going to win? <laughs> the kind God, the loving God, who, who yes. really forgives mm -hmm. us for our transgressions, or the punishing God? You're no longer a Catholic. Mm -hmm. But see, I probably would challenge you and say you haven't truly embraced your religion if you still let that punishing God yeah. direct your life at all. And we're going to hopefully get you thinking that this God of yours that you worship today wants you to experience happiness right. and joy. So where is Josie? Chloe woke up right as we walked in. Oh, okay. Hi there. Hi there, Chloe. So, Josie, how was it for you? Was it what you thought it was going to be? Um, I acted like I was going to hate it, but when I got there, I think I was the one that was more aggressive in getting it done. Yeah, I was definitely timid going into it. I think what I liked hearing more was the actual, how they met and how simple it was. It's not a big production. Some of them was love at first sight. Some of them were. I'm feeling like I learned a lot that there's all kinds of couples out there. Both of us are going to need some time to process everything we got. So let's talk about love, ladies. What do y'all want? Jennifer, you're single. Josie, you're single. Summer, you're single. Sine, you're single. Like, what kind of relationship do you want? What is what is love? Love, Kim? It's a soft place to fall, and it's also one of the most beautiful things in life, but it's not easy. I think you have to work oh, at yeah. it. I've worked very hard on my marriage. So You've been married twice, correct? I've been married twice. Okay. I've had two other very serious boyfriends. I've been in love with all of them. It's easy to fall in love. Mm -hmm. It's hard to keep a relationship. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. So what do y'all need? What kind of love do you need in order to fill up your container of love? I guess it's where I don't have to think that they really love me. I already know it. No matter what I do or where I'm at or who I'm with, I'm still loved and it doesn't change. It doesn't be questioned because I didn't have to do that with my grandma. I just knew. I didn't have to constantly be reminded that she loved me or throw those little reminders out and be like, okay, let's do a test, find out where the love's at. When grandma loves you, you, you liked yourself a lot more too. Oh yeah, I was yeah. so more confident about myself. And I'm wondering how your life would be different if you actually started believing that you had enough love. People always come up to me as well, you have to love yourself before others can love you. And I think, okay, oh my gosh, I pray that wasn't, I'm glad that wasn't true because so many people loved me before I could ever love myself. That's when I changed, when I realized people can love me before I love myself. And what if I'm wrong? What if I'm worth loving? Josie, are you that bad? What if grandma's right and you're wrong? It's hard because I put so much effort into everybody being like my girl. So when I see it in certain people, those are the ones I want to stay with and the other ones that I don't see it in, 
I just don't feel like it's my worth my time. Because it kind of keeps her more alive to me. And it, it makes me only focus on her. And that's what makes me feel better. Right now, Josie's having a breakthrough. The fact that she's realizing that her grandmother is really the only person that ever made her feel loved. <laughs> so how long does it, how long is the queen of punishment gonna continue this? I don't know. What, another 20 years like me? I feel like I could do it forever just as long as I'm staying loyal to them. So loyalty to them means not letting your heart love anyone else. <sighs> Kinda, yeah. And it sucks because it makes it even harder because that's like the only person I would ever want to share Chloe with. So it makes it hard for me to share with you guys because it's not where I was supposed to be. Damn it, my grandma and grandma were supposed to see their great granddaughter. Love shouldn't hurt this bad. It really shouldn't. I didn't think that love was gonna hurt me this bad or it made me sick. And what if love was the answer to the hurt? <laughs> well, that's it. Probably the truth. <gasps> and what if the hurt is really the lack of allowing more love in because you feel constricted by the love that you're only letting in? Yeah, yeah, I don't replace the hurt. It's not like I'm replacing the love. No, you're not replacing the no, love. No, I'm just you're adding to adding it. Adding more. Have we learned anything about ourselves tonight or had any insights about love tonight during our talk? So now you got some tears going on. What's going on? Nothing? Nothing's going on? You're just crying for <laughs> just cause and you just you just crying because you just feel like crying, but nothing's going on. I just had a sick and twisted thought, I guess. You had a what? A sick and wrong kind of thought. Go ahead, tell us. <laughs> How can you love me if I'm a burden? Mm -hmm. How can you love me if I have to ask you to read me something? That's not true. Sine. Sine doesn't believe that anyone else could love her in the condition she's in because she's declared legally blind. Well, I know that's not true. The ladies at the starting over house know it's not true. Now we just have to convince Sine. I love reading to you, Sine. Yeah. Makes me feel like I have a purpose for you. It makes me feel like I can offer you something to show you that I love you. I love to think about you and your situation. To actually ask you if I'm writing the words big enough so you know, so I know where you're feeling. Because I don't want you to feel like you feel right now. And I don't do it because I feel sorry for you. I do it because I love you and I put you there in my heart to make sure that I make you feel comfortable and that you're not a burden. And so next time it doesn't seem like I have to ask because I know. Because I don't want to make you feel that way. Because I do love you. I love you for your courage and your strength. Because I really think that if I was in your situation, I would give up. And you don't. Okay. All right, gang. Well, good work with your exercise. Keep exploring love. How we punished ourselves from love. How we keep ourselves from love. How we don't let ourselves love. And how we don't think we deserve love. Have a good night. Hello? Baby. Yeah. I forgot to tell you, happy eighth month. Happy what? Eighth month anniversary. Baby. Today is our eighth month anniversary. Baby, when we get to a year, that's what I'm talking about. Baby, can you just... I don't do that month to month thing. Can you just humor me? Okay, man. Happy eighth month. You're so insensitive. Huh? Nothing. I just wanted to tell you that. All right. That's all I wanted. Leaving the starting over house, I know that I'm going to be 
renewed Wanda. And my theory is, if you don't like it, so what? Tough. I'm going to say the things that I want to say and not worry about hurting that person's feelings. If you don't like it, get over it. Even if it's my husband. All right. Goodbye. Next on Starting Over, the women gang up on Jennifer. Fine, I just want to talk to you, Jennifer. Josie, are you no, serious? Fine. Seriously, bye. I don't know. Something's off. But she doesn't understand why. I feel like I'm being attacked. By who? By everyone. It's like I'm in trouble. And she tries to find her voice. I needed you when you weren't there. And I needed you when you weren't there. And I needed you when you weren't there. But you were going to be just fine. <laughs> no, I'm not. Just fine. No, I wasn't.